pleased to be joined by Brian Glick, who I mentioned is our editor-in-chief of, of Computer Weekly for this session. So we want to look at a few different things. Um, every year we do an annual IT priority study where we look at the major trends happening in the IT industry and then what's driving those trends. Basically, where is budget being allocated? So Brian's going to share with you the overall trends he's seeing and then really delve into three major themes, digital transformation, cloud, and AI. Um, Next, he's going to share insights into how his team is covering these technologies and then some of the case studies we've written around them. And lastly, I'm going to share if research is, is, is uh, equal to reality, meaning what are people responding to? What emails and content are they downloading? Uh, what's being researched on our site? And at the end, we'll give some practical advice about how you can leverage this data with your own outreach. And a lot of it's a follow-on to, to this uh, previous discussion. So with that, um, you know, I'll hand it over to Brian. Thanks, Brian. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Brian Glick. I'm my, my, most of my day job is running, is running Computer Weekly uh, in, internationally. Um, I'm also head of European editorial for Tech Target, so I, I, I look after editorial strategy for, for, tech, for tech Target outside of the, uh, uh, outside of the US. Um, one of the great things about being you know, running editorial in, in Tech Target, being a, a journalist in Tech Target, is the fact that you know everything you've been talking about here. Every, every single individual that has come through all these, all through Priority Engine and all these various systems that we do in order to turn into a prospective lead for you, is somebody who came into that process by reading a piece of editorial on on one of our on one of our websites. And the fact that we have you know ownership of all that content and ownership of that audience is something that that that, make, that makes us really unique. And I always love it when I hear people coming up here and saying using the phrase "content is king" because that means my team are the royal family of Tech Target. So I'm quite happy. With that. <laughs> Um, so, as, as, as Brent said, um, I was going to take you through some, some highlights as we go through from this big IT priorities research that we do. Um, now, you know, my, my, my team of journalists are, um, you know, spending their days trying to understand what is the, the, the best source of content to write for, for our audience on the various topics that, that, that we write about in a very similar way to you know, the conversations you've been having here today about the type of content that works at different stages of, of, of the buying cycle. For us, it's also about looking at what, what sort of content is the most appropriate content for the maturity of a particular technology or a particular te technology trend. One of the ways that we, that we do that is, is through this big IT priorities research that, that, we, that we do every year. And we'll just pick out a few little highlights to, to demonstrate how some of that works. Uh, and you know, Brent will then feed that in, you know, Brent will that relate that into how that turns into what we're providing for people through Priority Engine. Um, this is probably your favourite slide, whether you realise it or not yet, uh, from the whole, the whole research. Uh, we always ask people every year what's happening with your, with your budgets. Um, and uh, in this year's research, as you can see there, 91% of everybody asked are, are either maintaining or increasing their IT budgets this year. Um, two thirds of them saying they're saying they're going to increase, and that's the highest figure I've ever seen on this on this research. We, you know, I, I've been involved in this research for for, for, eight, for seven or eight years now. Um, so, you know, the propensity to buy in the market is higher now than I've seen it for a, for, for a long time, which is obviously very good news for everybody who's, who's in this room. Um, we asked them uh, from a, a long list of technologies to pick broadly, what are the initiatives that you're, you're going to uh, be implementing this, this year? Um, cloud, very much number one. Um, cloud, what, what, watching cloud over the last few years has been a, a constant process of seeing it, seeing it moving, up, moving up the chart here. Um, firmly established at num number one now. Um, interesting one there, one of the ones I'll touch on a little more in a moment, IT automation coming up at, at joint, number, joint number two. Um, Cybersecurity has always been one or two for the, for, the, for the last few years. Interesting now to see that automation is, is coming up as well. And I'll touch on artificial intelligence, automation, uh, stroke artificial intelligence more uh, as we go on. Uh, you'll see artificial intelligence and machine learning about a third of the way down there. And again, that's uh, over the last year, I mean, that's gone from 27% 20, of people looking at AI this year. Last year, that was about 12%. Um, so a very fast climbing statistic there. So one of the one of the other areas of question we talk to our people around is around digital transformation. Um, you know, in, in in a lot of the, the the PR and marketing that my team my team receive, 
there's a lot of digital transformation. Uh, talk, when we talk to, to our audience, to CIOs and IT managers about what they're doing, digital transformation nearly always comes out within the, within the, first, the first sentence. Um, so in some respects, it's perhaps no surprise looking at this uh, particular question on the survey, uh, which effectively says to us all but 8% of organisations are now on a process of digital transformation. And I'm pretty sure that uh, that links directly back to what we were talking about on the, on the budget slide uh, a, moment, a moment ago. That's where the driver for, for, for that increase in IT budget is coming from, is from the growth in, in, in digital transformation. Um, interestingly though, we, you know, we're starting to see there the, the fourth bar down there. Um, nearly one in five of organisations are now saying they are optimising digital transformation. So we're now getting to the point where we're starting to see, uh, if you like, a second generation of organisations that have been through their, their digital transformation process and are now looking to, to optimise and fine-tune that. Of course, you know, we all use this phrase digital transformation very often, um, but I'm sure if I picked out five people in the room to say, what does digital transformation mean to you, you'd probably give me five subtly different answers. Um, that's pretty much reflected also in the, in, in the research, as you can see there, where you ask people, you know, what's digital transformation about for you? Um, there's a very broad range of, of, uh, broad range of, of areas. So I think one of the, the, the key takeaways from this, both in terms of what we do editorially and in terms of, of how you're targeting people with uh, digital transformation message is just this recognition that it's, it's not the same thing to everybody. And as it's becoming a more mature part of people's IT strategies, um, it's important to be more specific about um, specifically what aspect of digital transformation or what type of digital transformation you're trying to, to hit people with. Having said that, while you can get many different def definitions of trans transformation, when you then start to, to talk to people about what technologies does that mean to support that digital transformation, cloud, absolutely number one. Um, I think it's, it, it's quite clear that, mo that most organisations, if they're doing digital transformation, a big part of that is, is, is making a move to cloud. Um, having said that, perhaps counterintuitively, the number two, as you can see there, is... Uh, improving on-premises IT infrastructure. And I'll touch on that one in, in the next slide as well. Um, third one down, I think, then, is probably the, the, the one that in many ways underpins both of those, um, and that's modernising applications. Um, put those three together, and what you get is a picture of organisations that are refreshing the software that their organisations run on to run in a, a hybrid cloud environment, combining cloud where it's appropriate, uh, and modernising their, their on-premises technology in order to, uh, to have that up the same sort of level that they can get from the cloud. And that's reflected very much from, from this slide here. We asked people um, uh, about the, their total computing capacity, how they expect that to change. Um, the, blue, the blue bit is increased, the, 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 the red bit is decreased, grey in the middle. Um, platform and infrastructure of a service, in, infrastructure as a service, the two highest increases. Uh, again, just underpinning, underpinning this trend that organisations are putting their budget into cloud, they're growing their compute, compute capacity into cloud. Um, Referring back to the, the, the previous slide and, and this uh, apparently counterintuitive element of upgrading on-premises infrastructure at the same time, um, you see coming in third in there is, is hyper-converged infrastructure. Compare that with the bottom of the chart where the two highest decreases are for standalone servers um, and that reinforces this fact of what we're seeing is, is a, a big drive to put more and more workload in, in, into the cloud um, but on-premises organisations are moving away increasingly from standalone servers to a hyper-converged model um, as part of a, a, a hybrid cloud environment. Now, in terms of what that means for us in our coverage and how we think about how we think about what, what we write about, um, this one is, is an example here. This is this is a, a, a about a fairly niche technology why rugged mobile devices are in, important in digital transformation. This is reflecting the fact that most organisations, as we showed earlier on, are somewhere already down the path on, di on digital transformation. Most organisations are, 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 are past the point of. Why do digital transformation, what does digital transformation mean to you? And are now looking to optimise it. So this is an example of, of, a, of an industry expert writing for us about a relatively niche technology, but you know, reflecting the fact that some organisations now are looking at how much more niche areas of their business need to be digitally transformed. Um, at another level completely to that, um, here's, a, here's a, another piece that we, that we did recently with my, one of my team, Caroline, who's, I'll embarrass her by saying she's sitting at the back of the room. Um, 
this, this was a, a, an organisation taking a very different p p perspective to it. Um, Maj Majestic Wine, who um, acquired uh, an online rival, Na Naked Wines, um, in order to effectively reverse their technology into um, this cloud native organisations technology. So again, it's uh, you know talking about um, more and more niche uses, more specific uses, but also much more specifically talking about case studies and the experiences that organisations have had in doing digital transformation as it's become a more mature pro part of the uh, part of the mix. Right. And then you know looking at we want to just show how we're covering it and how the trajectory has been. So this is looking at just UK only traffic towards our content written on digital transformation. And back in Q2 of 2017, it was just under 20,000 pages a month on the topic. And you can see the rise. And you know the editorial team only covers things that are relevant to the audience. So that's, that's a lot by user demand. The, on the left-hand side, we're looking at the top um, subject line. So these are promotions that Byron and her team are sending out promoting content. And I think this just, it, it, it validates what Brian just said. I mean, digital transformation can mean 20 different things. So if you do have a message around it, it's very important to be specific in the subject line on, on what you're talking about, whether it be mobility, uh, UCC, cloud. Um, if you're just kind of broad digital transformation, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be engaging with the, with the appropriate audience. Um, and then we looked at our segment within Priority Engine, and you can see it's, it's, there's a lot of research happening. So in the last 90 days, and this is looking at EMEA-wide data, there's just over 11,000 accounts that are doing some activity. You know, I mean, it, if you take a, a one action, you, you'll be on this list. So 11,000 accounts that are doing activity. I think it's interesting to see that the sample prospects. I mean, this is such a, a broad sweeping technology initiative, you're going to be talking to people, head of customer experience, IT people, business people, marketing, HR, everyone's really involved in this, um, you know, in this, in this topic. And then it shows in the core topics, it aligns a lot with cloud, mobility, customer experience. In fact, we're launching, you know, Computer Weekly covers this topic a lot, but we're, we're launching a, a customer experience management website search customer experience management based on the drive that we're seeing from, from digital transformation. So, um, you know, really telling that in this, in this case, the, the research, um, it does, a, the, the topics that are being researched does align with the, with the IT priority study. Okay, uh, let's have a little look at the, uh, a little more look at some of the stats around um, the, num the top priority that we identified earlier on, which was, which was uh, cloud. Um, again, you know, drill, drilling down from what are you doing to what are you spending increasing amounts of money on? Uh, again, you know, pretty much half of uh, of all our audience saying they're increasing their spend on cloud services over the, over, over the next uh, over the next 12 months, um, significantly above any other uh, any other technology category. But what what does that actually mean when you start to when you start to, to drill down in it? Um, when we look into into the data center, for example. Um, yeah, server virtualization has been number one on data center technologies for about the last 10 years. So there's no, there's no great surprise there. It's still, a, it's still an absolute mainstream part of that. But what's interesting is coming in, coming in below that now um, is not um, platforms of service or infrastructure service, but cloud monitoring, very specifically, which is, which has risen uh, significantly over the last 12 months. Um, if you ask the same question, a similar question around uh, networking and networking managers. Suddenly, number one from, from being very low down before um, is um, management and monitoring uh, in, in the cloud. Um, drill, down in, drill down into storage, cloud backup, cloud, cloud backup as a service. So what we're very much seeing with, with, with cloud is this is a technology that, that's um, moving from mainstream to mature. Um, it's uh, you know the, the, our, our audience is telling us that what they're looking to do now is is you know we un we've got cloud we understand cloud we don't need you to be telling us what cloud is and why and, and, and why we should be using it what we do want to what we do want to understand is how do we optimize it how do we monitor it better how do we ma how do we manage it better um, now here again uh, you know an, an example of an article from for, from Computer Weekly on this um, which is drilling down much more into the details of how do you manage the costs 
uh, of, of cloud services. This, this particular article is looking, is looking down into asset management um, and um, you know, the challenges of, of, of bringing a lot of the disciplines that you might have been used to having when you're in control uh, of all your on-premise infrastructure, um, being able to still do that when you're in a, in a, in a cloud environment as well. So very much, very much emphasizing the point of the, of the, of the maturing of cloud as part of a, as part of a, a technology mix in organizations. Um, and again, that feeds very much then into, into, into case studies. What our, what our audience wants to know is what are organizations like mine doing in cloud or what are the particular technologies. This one, this one here is uh, you know, from, from the education market. Um, if any of you, you know, if you're familiar with the education market, London Grid for Learning, which is a, a, a cloud provider to, um, to, to cloud and networking provider to schools. Um, who are very much at that level of uh, a very mature and advanced user of, of cloud, um, talking about how they're trying to take that to the next level, level talking about how they're trying to, to deliver uh, greater granularity of services and, uh, and um, uh, a more optimised services for, for, for their customers. Um, so the importance in an area like cloud, in a mature technology, of getting the voices of your customers into content um, is, is hugely important, and that's very much reflected from the survey results. Just not to put you on the spot, yep. a lot of content was a big theme in the first mm -hmm. few sessions. What, you know, and a lot of people want to reach senior IT CIOs. We've done a lot of panels in the past, but you, maybe you could just tell the audience, like, what, what resonates with the CIO yep. if, if you want them to actually consume a piece of your content? Yeah. What, what's, what's a good approach? Um, every, every, every CIO that I, that, that I, that I talk to basically, basically want two things. They want to know what, what, are, what, what, are, what are our competitors doing, so what are companies like me doing, and what's in it for me. Um, they're pretty much the two, the, 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 the two questions to answer. If you ask them what's the, the, the number one source of answering those questions, they'll say other CIOs. Um, before vendors, before, be, before us, before, um, before events that they go to. What, what those senior level people respond to the best is, is, is hearing what people like them are doing. Um, people who can talk their language, who, who, can, who can explain uh, the challenges they've had, how they've overcome those challenges, the benefits that, that, that they've got in the same language as, as, as they're using. So they want to know, you know, what are companies in the same market as me doing? What are companies in the same geography as me doing? What are, are companies of a similar, similar size to me doing in this, in this particular technology? Now, as you know, anyone in my team can, can tell you, getting a CIO or a senior IT person to, to stand up or to publicly talk about what they're doing, doing is not easy. Um, you know, that, that's part of our daily challenge is trying to, convince, trying to convince people to do this. You know, I recognize for all of you getting a lot of customers to, to, to be willing to talk in public for case studies and so forth is often a very difficult thing to do. Um, but I really can't stress enough that if you're, if you're, if you're particularly trying to, trying to target a senior audience, that sort of case study, peer-to-peer -peer type content is absolutely essential. And I mean, you know, as Brian mentioned, this is a much more mature market. I mean, looking at the cloud management subject lines, a lot around cloud services, how to, how this benefits the organization. Again, if we looked at this from five, six years ago, it's going to be much different subject lines resonating. Um, and then the page views is still a growing market. I mean, our, our page views have gone from 150,000 to 300,000 just in, in the UK around the topic. So we're, we're covering it on a regular basis, um, and it's still very important, but it's a, a lot more mature than digital transformation. Um, and then looking at uh, the cloud management um, segment overview. So not as much, you know, we typically see um, early on in a the cycle, there's a lot more interest, a lot more research being done and less people actually buying. You know, you look at cloud management, if we looked at this three or four years ago, this would have been probably 10, 12,000 accounts that are actively researching on a quarterly basis. So here we have 7,200 accounts. And if you look at the prospects, again, cloud manage management is going to be geared towards more of that um, that IT-focused title, so the content should be really written towards an, an IT audience, not, not, you know, line of business in this case. And then you can see some of the core topics, multi-cloud, cloud migration, are continuing to appear up as they have on the, on the research. Picks artificial intelligence uh, as a, a, a counterexample to that, as an example of, of a technology that is very much more in the, in the emerging stage. Um, you know, in the, we, in the, IT priorities research for the last two or three years, we've seen uh, AI and AI-related topics appear down the bottom in the, sing in the single digit uh, in, terms of, in terms of initiatives. Last year, they were up into the, the, the sort of the, 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 the 10%. Um, 
now very much taken a leap, a leap this year, IT automation coming in as, as second highest or joint second highest on the list with a, you know, a, a AI and machine learning not far behind. If we drill down, drill down into that, um, you know, this is a, you know, a first when asking people about what they're specifically doing around software, um, business process automation coming up as, coming up as number one. Um, that's, that's, that's come up quite a lot. Um, business process automation, robotic process automation, whichever buzzword you choose to, to use for it, you know, is arguably the, the, the most mature part of the, of the AI, AI, AI segment. Um, and as an emerging technology, we're seeing, we're, you know, we're seeing this is where most people are trying to put their, put, put their investment in, um, get, get their understanding of what it can do for them. Um, the number two on there is, interested, is interesting as well, API management. Relate, you know, uh, that's reflected here as well when you, you dig down a little further into, um, into software priorities as well. Those two are going very much, very much hand, hand in hand. Um, if, you're, if you're building a, 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 an automation strategy, if you're building a, a, um, a, an artificial intelligence strategy, underpinning all that is access to data. Um, most organizations still have you know, pretty, disparate, pre, pretty disparate data, and the way they're opening up that data to allow the automation tools to get at it is through API, uh, through, through the use of API strategies. So we're, see, we're, we're, you know, we're seeing this as a fairly classic example of an emerging technology coming in where there is one particular aspect, uh, one, one category within that, that technology which is slightly more mature, which is uh, um, delivering more faster, faster benefits, um, and people are, are venturing into that as their first way into the, the, the broader use of that emerging technology. That reflects with us in, in the, the, type of, the type of content here is much more about what does this mean to you? Um, what, what does this technology mean to you and your business and, and you as an individual? So, uh, you know, here, you know, early, early examples of, of, uh, of research and early adopters um, about what their experience have been of, the, of, of this emerging te technology. Um, there are, you know, occasional case studies in this area, but generally like this one, they, 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 these, they're more case studies around people who are testing. Um, uh, testing, testing the technology, um, which is appealing then to other early adopters and, and close followers of those um, in order to be able to get an understanding of how to take those first steps in trying to work out exactly what, what a technology like AI or automation means to, to, to your organization. Yeah. And you can see in the subject lines, it's, it's an emerging space, you know, it's going to be, we're in the early stages. You know, you, you can just see three recommendations to use AI in data integration project, common uses for AI um, in retail and future trends. So early stage, obviously the, the, the interest is there. People are trying to understand how to implement this, but, you know, it's not happening at a mass scale uh, today. And the, uh, again, against this is an emerging trend, we're going to see more people doing research. But that research tends to be more on the editorial side. You know, if we look at our editorial page views consumed, um, from AI versus the n amount of content downloads, it's, it's night and day. Um, you know, in a few years' time, that will be balanced out more 50-50. Um, and so you can see some of the, the sample prospects and core topics that are being consumed around this topic. So I think, like, how to put this all together, I mean, research tells a story. You know, I'd use if, if you're setting your budget and you have a cloud services message and an AI message and you're tasked with generating net new pipeline in the year 2019, I'd make sure that I didn't have 50% of my budget allocated towards AI material because you're going to get a lot of response and then it's not going to convert anything to sales and then they're going to go back to you and say marketing failed. So it's like it's, research helps you align where you're allocating your budgets. Um, and then the intent really helps you determine um, when to engage with these accounts and what to say. So, you know, right time marketing, I think everyone in this room agrees with. You know, here's a few examples. Let's say you had an ABM list of, of, of banking organizations, Barclays, Royal Bank of Scotland, HSBC, and Lloyds. Well, if your sales team was trying to engage with Lloyds and HSBC in January, February, they're not going to have any success. So wouldn't you want to know when, who to engage with, in this case Barclays and Royal Bank of Scotland, and what to say? A lot of what Andy and Lissette and Alan were talking about in the previous panel, and, and also Jonathan and Matt as well, is like using the intent to open that conversation. Um, so it's like right time marketing is crucial. Um, and then here's an example of like four different companies that are all focused on different topics. And I know a lot of people in the room have one or two technology areas, but there are companies that focus on multiple things. So knowing what to say to a, a, an organization based on what their 
interested in right now is the, is the difference between having a, a meaningful first conversation and then telling you we're not interested. Um, so Andy talked about this a lot before, but a lot of what we do is help sales organization not sell your technology, it's how can you frame the conversation to make it be a consultative approach. So again, we take intent and relevant information and, and put it into a more consultative email. So let's assume that Tech Target sells flash storage. You know, here's, here's a way we do it. My name is Brent, your local Tech Target account manager. Over the course of the next few weeks, we're giving all flash array presentations, sharing how other organizations in banking sector are using Tech Target Super Flash to achieve faster data access and more reliable DR and business continuity. Um, we'd also be sharing how we compare with other vendors in the space like Pure Storage and Dell EMC. Now, again, Andy talked about this. We know Barclays is in the banking sector, so you're saying how, we're already personalizing it. We're going to be focused on how other organizations in the banking sector are using this. We know that they're engaging with Pure and uh, Dell EMC. We don't have to say, I know you're engaging with Pure and Dell EMC. We just say, hey, we're going to compare how we differ from these. And then you're pushing, putting the topics that are relevant to them um, in, in the body of the email. And we've just seen time and time again, this type of approach is going to have a more, uh, well, it's going to be a lot more positive and you're going to make headway. I think we all, you know, are still focused, not we, but the, te you know, the telemarketing teams, SDR teams calling up, hey, Mr. Barclays, you know, you download one of our assets, do you have a budget around flash storage? I mean, even if they did, they're just going to say no, because if they say yes, guess what? This person's going to be calling and emailing them every day. So we do this a lot with intent within Priority Engine. You all have intent sources in your own organizations. You could be Marketo, Salesforce, Google Analytics. The whole point is, you know, we're in a day and age where you have to use intent to make headway. Because if you're calling up saying, do you have a project, you download this white paper, you know, you know sales is going to always come back and say, this marketing program didn't work when the reality is their outreach wasn't, wasn't appropriate to, to what they're focused on. All right, well, thanks, thanks a lot, Brian. And Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thanks.